Since the broad-based success of the 1999 Buena Vista Social Club film and album celebrating Cuban musicians, there's been a succession of virtuoso Cuban musicians like Roberto Fonseca, who have regularly played major music festivals and venues throughout the U.S. The United States is a great and important uh, uh, platform for young musicians, you know. But changes in U.S. visa procedures are making it more difficult for this current generation of Cuban musicians like Rodrigo Garcia Amaneros and his wife Tanya Haas Solorzano. They've spent much of the past year trying to get visas to play at festivals and schools in the United States they've been invited to. No, we, we all have guarantee and we are trying to do it, but yes, it's hard to process. Like most Cuban jazz musicians, Rodrigo and Tanya are classically trained graduates of Cuba's national music schools. They attended from elementary school through college. They've spent the majority of their lives preparing for professional music careers and joining the ranks of Cuba's world-class musicians. Eight uh, years or 10, we started in, the, in the school like a career. At that age, you are not thinking in a career, but we have that- uh, Opportunity. Yeah, opportunity, but also uh, it's like a respons responsibility. During the last week of the Trump administration in 2020, the U.S. shut down its embassy in Havana, accusing Cuba of state-supported terrorism. Since then, most Cuban musicians now have to travel to a third country with the U.S. embassy just to apply for a visa. It's devastating, emotionally and otherwise. It's, the toll is at so many levels. Immigration attorney Bill Martinez helped get the original Buena Vista Social Club musicians into the U.S. for their celebrated Carnegie Hall debut in 1998. He continues helping them and other Cuban musicians work through their visa application nightmares. The big change is that administrative processing, which happens after the consular interviews, is causing um, long delays and sometimes resulting in the cancellation of tours. And is it predictable? Do you know when you apply for a visa how long it's going to take? You can never know. It's absolutely unpredictable. At this year's annual Havana International Jazz Festival held every January for showcasing Cuban and other international artists, American music promoters were struggling to book Cuban performers for their upcoming festivals due to visa issues. You have to have the visa in order to do the booking. In order to get the booking, you have to, it's kind of like the double-edged sword, right? It's like, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Kevin Ball and Lonnie Smith represent jazz festivals in North Carolina and Texas. Rodrigo's uncle and teacher, pianist Aldo Lopez Galvalon, started playing major summer music festivals like this one in Napa Valley in 2017 after the Obama administration started normalizing relations and travel protocols with Cuba. But most of them were reversed by his successor, and the Biden administration has done little to lift the new restrictions during an election year. If you call me uh, tomorrow and you tell me, uh, can you be in San Francisco next week to, to work? Of course not. <laughs> we have to do it with a lot of time. While they waited indefinitely for their visas, American audiences could only see them perform in old Havana's tourist restaurants, which have also been impacted by the added U.S. restrictions on Americans and foreigners traveling to Cuba. Their band is paid in cash and in meals, which have become even more valuable this year due to the government's latest round of food price hikes and rationing. We know a lot of cases of musicians going out of the country, not because they don't want to be here, because it's really hard to get a job. Most of the cast for last year's off-Broadway musical revival of the Buena Vista Social Club film were Cuban musicians who had previously left their country for professional reasons. According to the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, nearly a half a million Cubans are believed to have migrated to the U.S. in just the last two years, due to their declining local economy. Our purpose, in, I mean, at this moment, is to live here in Cuba and to go and just return at the end. 
And I think that's about love to a family, to our home, and also to our country. As headliners at this year's Havana International Jazz Festival, Rodrigo's mother and Tanya's extended music families joined them on stage to honor Cuba's rich musical history and culture they are dedicated to preserving. This concert is about the history of the country, uh, talking about love, how we suffer sometimes uh, the vibration. It's a place to be happy and also to cry together. We are always hoping that it will be better yeah, for all of us. I mean, I think that uh, restrictions uh, are just stopping the interchange between one and the other people. A lot of culture uh, is being stopped. After intensive lobbying by festival promoters and government officials on both sides of the process, Rodrigo and Tanya received educational and cultural visas to salvage some of their American invitations, as long as they don't get paid to perform in the U.S. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Mike Saray in Havana, Cuba.